may care not today what tomorrow may bring if shadow or sunshine or rain the lord i know ruleth o'er everything and all of my worry is vain living by faith in jesus above i'm trusting
rolls a melody sweeter than song in celestial like strains it unceasingly falls or my soul
It's peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. Thank you, Lord, for peace. Thank you for that peace that passes all understanding tonight, folks. This old world could use some of that right now, but they don't know Jesus. And if they don't know Jesus, they don't know peace tonight. Amen. Amen. I'm out. Thank you. Good job tonight, guys. Thank you, singers, musicians tonight. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for you. Yeah, give them a big hand tonight. We certainly do appreciate it them so much and so much tonight. My, my, my. Let's go ahead and take up prayer request tonight. If somebody's got a need tonight, let's remember uh, Sister Mary Duarte. She's not feeling good tonight. She had injection in her knee, so she's in a lot of pain. And let's remember Sister Ramirez. Ramirez, she's in St. John's tonight recovering from her surgery. So uh, keep them in our prayers tonight, Sister Gwendolyn. Anybody else tonight? My cousin had surgery this week, and she had two brain tumors. And they went in and got everything out, and uh, she's making, making good recovery. It's amazing. Thank you, Lord, for good doctors and uh, good hospitals. And that's amazing what they can do now. But to God be the glory for it all. Amen. Remember Jerry Fritchie recovered from his surgery? Amen. Anybody else tonight? Unsaved loved ones, unspoken requests tonight. We serve a big God. We're going to believe big. Amen. Let's just stand to our feet tonight and believe God. Father, we love you. Lord, we thank you tonight. Lord, we are so mindful. Lord, we are watchful. Lord, we are concerned over every need tonight. Lord, Father, we're dependent upon you. Lord, as our divine healer tonight. Lord, as our strength giver. Lord, as our Lord, of life tonight, Lord, Father, we thank you're the one who provides, uh, Lord, all of our needs tonight, Lord. You're the one who supernaturally, Lord, uh, gives us strength in our bodies tonight to accomplish your will. And, Lord, you heal us, you renew us tonight, Lord. And, Father, we thank you for the saving of our loved ones tonight, Lord, that you are dealing and convicting the hearts and convincing the hearts. And, God, we pray tonight, Lord, for the local church tonight, Lord, that people will be stirred, Lord, in their spirit tonight, Lord, for faithfulness and serving, Lord, and faithfulness us in attendance, Lord. Father, stirring hearts and stirring lives tonight, Lord, knowing that we're the end time, Lord. God, help us to be urgent about the Father's business. Father, we're praying tonight, Lord, for the goodness of God, Lord, across this nation. Lord, we just pray healing in the land tonight, God. Lord, healing, Lord, and direction and wisdom and prudence, Lord, for our nation's leaders. Um, Lord, that they would be a bent on, on serving you and returning this nation to you, Lord. Father, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem tonight, Lord. We pray for 
Pray for Israel that you will bless this nation, Lord. Father, we thank you for the saving of the soul tonight, Lord. We love you. Lord, we give you all the praise and all the glory for your divine faithfulness. We ask it all in Jesus' precious holy name. And everybody said amen. Before you sit down, shake somebody's hand tonight and say, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here tonight. Praise God. I'm glad you're here tonight. Amen. Amen. God is so good. God is so good tonight. Well, let's get your Bibles out tonight. We're going to be uh, talking about a subject. I believe it's going to be helpful to you. I was looking at going a different direction, and I started studying last night and refreshing over it, and uh, I just couldn't get interested in it. And I said, well, tomorrow's a new day, y'all. We started fresh in the morning, and this morning rolled around, and uh, I still couldn't get interested in it. I said, Lord, where are you at? Where are you at, Lord? You ain't in this message. And so he began to speak to my heart. And, uh, and so tonight we're going to be talking about what a Christian mind should be. What a Christian mind should be. This is a, a, a unique s- uh, subject tonight. And so I want to do some breaking down of it tonight. I believe it's going to help tonight in different areas. Well, we'll get to a, a scripture in just a minute, but uh, I just want to kind of give some uh, broad details about the mind tonight. Uh, let's start with the soul. We talk about the body, mind, soul, and the spirit a lot of times. So soul, the soul is the interwining, in, intertwining of the mind and of the heart. So it is, it is a complex system of all of our knowing and our believing so this all kind of ties into this area here it is a complex system of activity of the inter what we call the inner man or the inner person of who we are it represents uh, it it represents who we are in christ jesus it represents who we are and it is the sum of the thoughts of which is our mind and it is the sum of our feelings which is the heart so these are all systems that is tied around this tonight. The mind is a powerful thing, amen? And the mind is such a powerful thing tonight, and it, uh, it is a wonderful tool that God has given us. But also the mind can be very dangerous. The mind can be very dangerous. The mind can also offend God. We can offend God with our mind. And you say, well, I, well how is that possible? Well, when you start reading, just turn with me real quick to this, the Matthew, Matthew, the fifth chapter at the Sermon on the Mount. I, I read it today and I didn't say amen. I just said, ouch and ouch and oh me. And uh, I started looking through this and gleaning from the pages of the sermon that he preached and taught from the Mount uh, and he, and, and, and he talked about them in, in verse number 18, Matthew 5 and 18. He said, for verily I say unto you. That's what caught my attention. He says, Randall, I'm talking to you. So he just talking to us plainly here. He said, till heaven and earth shall pass, will not one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Now, when you look in verse 20, he said, for I say unto you. Except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. That ought to get our attention tonight, folks. We can't just nonchalantly and casually stroll right on into heaven here, folks. It's going to take us urgently and working and, 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 and doing what pleases the Lord here. Amen. This ought to be an eye-opener to us tonight. Those who are listening by, listening by media tonight, thus saith the Lord unto you tonight that we need to be occupying about the Father's business and our righteousness should be exceeding that of the Pharisees and the scribes tonight. Lord, help me do better. Lord, help me do better tonight. Amen. Verse 21, you have heard that it was said. There's another illustration tonight. By them of the old time, thou shalt not kill, but whosoever shall kill them shall be in danger of judgment. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. That's strong meat tonight, folks. And this all happens where? (laughs) This all plays around in your mind tonight, right here. If you start thinking about these things, 
He said, he that is angry without a cause shall be in danger of judgment. Look, he said, and, and shall be in danger of hell fire. And he calls somebody a fool. Look at verse, verse uh, 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 look at verse, just skip down to verse 26. But I say unto you, thou shalt by no means come out of this till thou hast paid the uttermost farthing. 27, you have heard that it was said of the old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. That's where lust is conceived up there, is in your mind area. And so, I mean, this is all, this is all attention getters here tonight. They say, hey, this is warning of stuff. Now, he was teaching about this. He said, if the right eye offend thee, pluck it out, cast it from thee. For it is proper for thee that their members should perish and not one the whole, not that the whole body should be cast into hell. He's very serious about this stuff tonight. He said, if your right hand offend thee, cut it off. Cut it off. It ain't worth it tonight. He said, verse 31, it has been said, whosoever shall put away his wife, let him get running and divorce. But I say unto you, that, whos, that, that whosoever shall put away his wife, except for the cause of fornication, cause her to commit adultery, that whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, commit adultery. But, I, but it, it, And again, you have heard that it had been said by them of the old time, thou shalt not forswear thyself, but thou shalt perform thy Lord thine oath. But I say unto you, I mean, there's a lot of things that we're trying to work out in our minds, but we need to see what, God, what do you say about it? Because your heart and your mind can deceive you. Your heart and your mind can offend God. But we got to know what do you say about the matter? How do you say we should roll with this thing here? And it goes on to say, 38, but it has been said, but I say unto you, verse 43, it has been said, but I say unto you, in verse 4, to love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That's what God says about it. Amen. But in our mind, we say, I don't, want to, I don't want to see them. I don't want to be around them. I don't want to be having anything to do with them at all. But God said, you better learn to love them. Amen. This is strong meat tonight. But what a Christian mind should be. Now, save the best for last. Go to, go to 15. Chapter 15. Chapter 15, verse 17. Chapter 15, 17. Do not ye yet understand that whosoever enter in at the whatsoever enter in at the mouth go to the belly and is cast out into the drought. He said, but those things which proceed out of your mouth come forth from the heart and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornication, thefts, false witnesses, and blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. This is what defiles a human. This is what defiles a person. These kind of thoughts, these that, that proceed, that proceed, that proceed from your mind, proceed from your heart tonight. But to eat with unwashing hands, that don't, they don't care. They don't, that ain't go, that doesn't matter. You can eat with dirty fingernails, and dirty hands, but don't, but do not. But do not let these things of evil thoughts and murders and adulteries and fornication and thefts and false witnesses and blasphemies proceed out of our mouths. Amen. Do not allow what is imagined in our mind to come to fruition and become activities. Oh, this is my Lord. We see tonight, we see that the brain, the brain is a physical, is a physical Part of the body and the anatomy tonight, it is composed of nerves and it is physical. You can take your brain out, you can play with it, and you can put it back in. <laughs> Don't y'all ever do that? Am I the only one? <laughs> but you can take your brain out, you can physically touch it, you can do surgery on your brain. As I thought about my cousin, how they had to go inside and cut her skull and dig around in there and cut out those two tumors, folks. I mean, so it's physical, but your mind, but your mind cannot be physically touched. It has to do with the, the spiritual, but your mind is vulnerable. Your mind is very vulnerable. Now, I wrote this down. I, in, in my thoughts, I wrote it down, and I had to go back, and I had to really examine this to be sure that I got it right. The mind can be not only is it vulnerable, but it can also be penetrable. And I thought, is that right? Can your mind be penetrated? So I went back and I looked. I said, okay, does Satan know my thoughts? Can Satan get into my mind? And the answer to that is absolutely not. He is not omniscient. 
He is not omnipotent. God is the only one that knows your mind. He's the only one that knows your thoughts. But here you are. The enemy, the enemy, Satan is not omnipresent, so he can't be anywhere at all times. So Satan is dependent upon his little demons. He's dependent upon his little imps, his little army, to go around and harass the Christian and harass the believers. So these little imps and these little demons that run around, they follow you and they study you and they, they, it's called a familiar spirit. They learn to identify with what you speak out. So Satan takes, a, takes a, 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 an estimated guess of how you're going to react out of what you're speaking. But also your mind can be penetrated by the things that we watch, by the things that we see, by the things that we hear, by the things that we look into. And these things can penetrate into our mind. And if you're not careful, they can take root. And then we'll start acting upon these thoughts and these imaginations that come into our mind. Mind, so it, in a, in in a, in a sense, it can be penetrated tonight into that inner being tonight, and so you know all that all that we are, whether it be a mental or emotional, or whether it be a spiritual tonight, affects around the mind. The mind is that which thinks, it is which imagines, it's which remembers. How many remembers past? sins I mean remember past mistakes past problems past things that and you rehash them over and over and over in your mind it's like a bad dream and you want to get it out but your mind is such a powerful powerful tool and it has such a a a a, 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 a such a, a, a memory, vast amount of memory inside of it that your mind, it, it remembers and it rehashes and it reviews and your mind, it reasons and your mind, it, it wills and your mind, it senses and your mind tonight, of a, it, it has the sensations and it knows what sensations are and your mind, it wants things and your, your, your mind tonight is associated with, the, with, with, the, with, with, with experiencing feeling. It is experiencing and perception and knows what pleasure is. It knows what pain is and it knows what belief is and what desire is. And we know what it, your brain, your, your mind knows what emotions is and your mind, it, it, the intentions of the mind. And, and it's just like a, a huge system, a complex system up there that God designed and orchestrated tonight. And we've got to use this mind for what God designed it for. So what the Christian mind should be, the enemy likes to distort it. The enemy likes to pervert it. The enemy likes to put those negatives. You know, if you go back and you read about Lot, uh, you can read about him in Genesis. You can read about him in, in, in 2 Peter. And, and Peter said that his mind was troubled or afflicted or it was vexed. You can go back and read the book of Job. Job was vexed in his mind about many things. There's trouble and there's afflictions that come against people. There's so many minds that, that, are, that are vexed with mental issues. And, but I believe we serve a God who is divine healer tonight, who can renew the mind, who can restore the mind. He can deliver the mind tonight from the corruptness and the evil the enemy tries to vex people with tonight. So we see tonight that the decisions are being made in our mind tonight, whether they are moral or whether they're immoral in nature tonight. It is with the mind that, that we, have, we choose to accept God or to reject God. It is through the mind tonight that we either choose to obey the commandments of God or disobey the commandments of God. It is through the mind, of, mind, the mind tonight that we can rebel against God. Or we can reject God. It, the mind is a powerful thing. That's why the enemy works so hard. And I know you've heard that old, the old wives' tale, the old tale, and that the, the, the mind is the devil's playhouse. Well, it's not scripture. I can save you from looking it up. It ain't scripture tonight. But it's the idleness. But it's the idleness of the mind that wonders. It's the mind, it's, it, it, is, it is the mind tonight that, that disappoints, it's undisciplined. There's an undisciplined, our mind, if our mind is undisciplined, it just wonders. And so our mind needs to be governed and controlled by the Holy Spirit. And that's where a lot of people 
get out of whack is they're not following the, the leading and the guiding and the development and the discipline of the Holy Spirit in our minds. My, my. So as he said, out of the heart, but your heart sometimes intertwines with your, with your spiritual inner man. You've got, you, those are, oh, they're intertwined. They're, they're just, it's hard to really separate and distinguish the two. We talk about the heart of man, the mind of Christ. It, it, they all intertwine, and, and so, but they're, they're so uniquely tonight. But God gives us a, a, a revelation. God gives us revelation, not, but the human side of us, we must decide whether to employ what God has given us tonight and to apprehend it and to receive it and put it into action or reject what God gives us. And all this happens in our spiritual mind, in our spiritual heart, our spiritual being tonight. And so we, we, we see this here uh, play out so much tonight. Uh, when you look in, in, in Mark the 8th chapter, Mark the 8th chapter, Let's look over here in Mark the 8th chapter, verse 31. Mark 8 and 31. Mark 8 and 31 says, And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And he spake that saying openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. I would hate to be in Peter's shoes right there. Peter wasn't thinking. He was not thinking in his mind. Or, I mean, how do you have enough nerve and courage to walk up and rebuke Jesus? That's mercy. But Peter did. Peter did. It's written here that Peter began to rebuke him. But when he had turned about and looked at his disciples, and he rebuked Peter. <laughs> Woo, Lord have mercy. He rebuked Peter, saying, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou savorest not. That's the word right there. Thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. So the, the Greek word on that is, is phron, phron, phronio, P-H-R-O-N-E-O. It means the mind views understanding. That's what it means. It means having an understanding. So what Peter was saying here, he said, you don't understand and you don't have no care. You don't have the concern for the things of God, but you do have a concern in the things of man. So in order for us to have a clean, pure mind, we need to get our mind up on Christ and start thinking about what pleases God and how our mind responds to, responds to Him tonight and, and, and knowing what uh, it's, either, it's either godly, heavenly concerns or it is fleshly, carnal, human concerns tonight. He said, you're not, you're not savoring, you're not savoring the things that be of God. So our mind is playing an important role. And so if we can be distracted by the things the world so if satan can get out there you, 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 you know you, you, you go to, uh, when you go to james james the, the fourth chapter verse 18 you know what jesus said he said if you draw nine to me i'll draw nine to you and then he says this right before he said submit yourselves to god submit yourselves to god that wasn't written just because, just because. It was written as a format and as a blueprint to know how we're supposed to overcome the evil when it comes. Because he said, first thing you do is you submit to God. Then when you submit to God and allow him to govern your mind and take control of your thinking, then you resist the devil. Many people flip flops that back around. Oh, devil, get out, leave me alone. Well, the person is telling the devil, get out. they've not yet submitted. But if we submit ourselves first, then we resist the devil, and he'll flee from us. But we've got to first get our mind under the control of the Holy Spirit and come into the right position, the right place, and start, Lord, I want the things that concerns you. There's so many times where mind is preoccupied by the things that concerns us and concerns our humanistic side of us tonight. You can also go into Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Matthew 22nd and verse 17 Matthew, two, Matthew 22 and verse 17. 
Oh, actually, it's, if I could see, Matthew 22 and 37, sorry. Matthew 22 and 37. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and the great commandment. So everything, the sum total of who we are, is to do what? Love God. Love God. That is what our mind is to do, is to love God. Our mind is to be concerned with the things of God. Our mind is to be uh, 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 thinking about, about the goodness of God and all that he brings to us. So go to 1 Corinthians 2 and 16. 1 Corinthians 2 and 16. Look at what he says here about it. 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 16. Let me get over here where it's at. 1 Corinthians 2 and 16 says, And I baptized, no, first, wrong one, 2 and 16. He says, For who hath known the mind of the Lord? Well, Paul is quoting from Isaiah, the 40th chapter, verse 13. Who can, who can teach God or who, can, who, who has taught God the thing? Well, Paul is quoting from what Isaiah wrote 700 years prior, or 750 years prior. He said, but said Who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Thank God. Thank God. Well, Pastor, how do, you, how do you get the mind of Christ? Oh, it's a big, it's a big ordeal. It's a big ordeal. You had to get the mind of Christ. And here you go. You ready? Number one, get saved. <laughs> Number one, get Jesus in your heart. Number two, believe in God with all your heart, body, mind, soul, and love it. You surrender your heart to God. It's that simple. Now, when you become born again, you have faith in God, and your name gets written on the Lamb Book of Life, you just inherited the mind of Christ. But you've got to develop that mind. You develop that mind just like as a child is developed. You've got to start developing and training your mind through the Word of God, through what God says. So when you get in God's Word and you start reading the things in Matthew chapter 5 about, the, uh, uh, about this, but this I say unto you, that is what develops our spiritual mind so that we can become concerned about the things of God. And there's so many distractions that our mind is more concerned about the human things right now. And therefore, it, it whew, Lord. Therefore, we have to take a mind and we have to discipline our mind. We got to bring our mind and bring those thoughts unto captivity, casting down those imaginations and exalt himself. And so, therefore, we got to discipline our mind because there's a lot of undisciplined minds right now. I'm just going to say it. And the enemy's making sure of that. Satan is making sure that our minds are occupied. Well, I won't even go there. I won't even go there. Lord, help us. Lord, help us. So, so what we find, so how do we get the mind of Christ? Well, I just told you right there. So we, we, we get the mind of Christ by receiving Christ into our lives. And it, it doesn't it make such a difference having the mind of Christ over him, when he starts when the Holy Spirit starts leading us when the Holy Spirit guides us the Holy Spirit directs us the Holy Spirit uh, uh, we, we delight in the things in the we delight in the things of God that he has for us and not and so we, 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 we must understand when we have the mind of Christ we start understanding what the will and the plan of the Lord is for our life. We don't have to walk around as, as blind people, but we start knowing the will of the Father and the will of God in our lives. So therefore, we can stay focused and stay on stay on, on 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 pace with what the Father wants us to do. But the enemy does everything he can to pervert our thinking. We live in a, in a world of depravity right now. It's, it's, it's out the roof. We're living in a time where iniquity is abounding. We're living in a time where lawlessness is out the roof right now. And nobody seems to care about it. Making me aggravated, making me upset. Because I'm paying good tax dollars to help support these universities. And are allowing that junk to go on up there. Turn a blind eye to it. Come on somebody. It's hard to aggravate us. And they're calling us to rise up and stand up and say enough is enough. 
sometimes I feel like we're sheep going to slaughter and we just be silent. Hello? Sometimes this old sheep wants to get a set of ram's horns and start tearing up jack. That spiritual righteousness inside of me. Get a little spiritual anger. But it ought to upset us tonight, folks. It ought to, it ought to make us angry to do something tonight. I'll make you go to the polls and vote what it'll do. Make you get on your knees and pray about it for sure. Amen. Amen. So when we start having the mind of Christ, we start identifying with Christ. We take on his identity tonight. We start sharing in, in, in Jesus' uh, purposes. We start sharing in his humiliation. We start, uh, uh, we start sharing in his, uh, in, in his compassion. Hello. I mean, this is good stuff tonight, folks. This is just good down-home teaching tonight. And we, when we start having the mind of Christ, we start learning our, to have a dependence upon him. We start moving and touching as he would touch and heal as he would touch tonight and how he would. So he begins to dwell on the inside of us and he enlightens us tonight and he transforms us. I'm so glad that he transforms my mind. There's so much, so much junk in the life going on right now through news and social media and, and everything. Your, your, your mind can get so cluttered and your mind can get so confused about things. When you feed on so much of it, you don't know what to believe. You got so much going on up there. Hello, I'm just I'm just trying to point out some things tonight, folks. We need to be wise tonight. We need to be wise in the eyes of the Lord tonight. So when we when we look at this tonight, you can go to a, a Romans 12 and 2. We talked some of this about uh, this uh, went a Sunday night. Romans Romans 12 and, and verses 1 and 2. I think I'm still full from Sunday. My Lord, I thought I was going to go from a belt to suspenders just as sure as everything. <laughs> wasn't a good time to go, wasn't a good time to go on a diet. <laughs> just glory. <laughs> Romans, Romans 12 and 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. We use that a lot, but we use that a lot, but we need to know now what renewing your mind is tonight because it is impossible for you to renew your mind. I don't care how many help books you have. I don't care how many medications you take. I don't care how many books or how many stars you read or how many horoscopes you read tonight or, or how many farmer's almanac or how many sports illustrated magazines you, you can it is impossible for a man to renew his mind without god it's impossible that's why it's so hard to put people psychiatrists and psychologists they, they prescribe medicine they cannot touch the mind because it is not physical all they're doing is, is causing the people to walk around like a like a like a, a humdrum and walk around like zombies because they're just trying to sedate them. That's not the answer, folks. The answer to the problem, the vexed mind, is the Spirit of God. It's the Word of God. It's the Holy Ghost tonight that will change the mind. And that's what's wrong with half the church. People ain't thinking godly. They ain't thinking right. We need a renewed mind. That's why. That's why. We, that's why. You, that's why. You got you, you, you got to go to the Philippians, and, and, and this is the ultimate scripture. It's the ultimate Philippians four and eight. It's it's the ultimate scripture. Everybody ought to know this one and and apply this. And apply this every day of our lives. When it comes to the mind, we need to focus and believe on this one. And he says, Philippians four and eight. He says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think and meditate on these things. It's these things that will renew your mind. It's what keeps your mind sharp. It's what keeps your mind focused. It's what keeps your mind from opposing and defiling and defending God. <laughs> If you know, when you, I mean, I'm not the smartest tool in the toolbox, but I know pretty quickly when my mind goes off in an area it shouldn't be going in. So I have a choice to make at that time. Either do I allow my mind to wonder, 
Do I allow my mind to go ahead and imagine? Do I allow my mind to go ahead and have its little heyday out here? Or do I reel it in and say, no, 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 no. I'm bringing it back into, I'm bringing it back into captivity here. And I say, no, 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 not today, devil. Do I bring it back into captivity and I reassign my mind, I develop my mind, what it's been trained to do. Hello, I can go back and reach in this box over here and say, nope, I'm going to pull out some things that are true. I'm going to pull out the goodness of God. I'm going to pull out how good God's been to me. I'm going to say, Lord, you've been faithful to me. So I've got an area that I can reach back into. But I first got to reel this one back in. But then I got to start exerting this one here. And then I start thinking on that one. And that's when I start pleasing God rather than offending God. But if we meditate, if we allow our mind to meditate and wonder in dangerous red flagged areas, we start getting in trouble. That's when, that's when lust starts developing. That's when fear starts being developed. And, and all these things that starts, and, and fear is a, and, and fear is a, a horrible, uh, a, one, of, one of Satan's greatest attacks on the mind is to confuse us. So we've got to be very careful about what our mind is thinking, but you've got to reel it in with the Scripture because he said in verse, um, in verse 6, he said, Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. So if we have a mind that's full of thanksgiving tonight, we're not going to be thinking on lustful things. We're not going to be thinking on anger. We're not going to be thinking on how we can get even with somebody because our mind is already pre preoccupied with giving praise and thanksgiving to God. And then when we start having a prayer with God, communion with God, fellowship with God, then you get verse 7, because a prayer of thanksgiving will usher in the peace of God. So when you're, if your mind is troubled about some things, just start thanking God. Just start worshiping God. Just start praising God. And then he releases, then he releases in your mind the things that are lovely, the things that are true. He starts releasing in your mind the peace of God. There's a release that takes place. You can take that little capsule, and it, it, you, it, you, you can take it into your system, and it's got a time release on it, and that capsule release, and, and pretty soon you start feeling it all over your body. Well, same thing with prayer. When you start praying, it's got a release system in it, and when it starts coming out, it starts affecting your whole entire body, and you start having a peace that comes over your mind. You start having a peace in your heart where it was vexed, and you start having the loveliness of God and the presence of God, and before you know it, your mind is right back where it ought to be, praising God, loving God, your mind's upon God, where you have a concern for the things of God. Man. God is good. God is good. So it helps tonight. So we line up. So when we start talking about the things that are true tonight, the truth tonight, not our opinions, when we start talking about the truth tonight, we start taking notice of the thoughts that do not line up with the Word, do not line up with Scripture, but also we start thinking about the things that do line up with the Word of God. That's where your mind starts thinking because your mind makes decisions. Your mind remembers. Your, 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 your mind uh, knows what perception is. So when we put these into our heart, into our mind tonight, we can draw them out. So, so scripture reading tonight will help us to have the process that it transforms our minds. It shapes our minds. And it, and it gives purpose and it gives direction to our being. That's when you go back and look at the scripture that Jeremiah wrote to Jeremiah 29 11. We all know it, but let's just read it tonight again anyway. It's just a good verse that helps us tonight, right? Kind of like Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. We'll probably go there next. But he says in Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the thoughts. So if Jesus has a mind and he's thinking, we're going to be thinking about him. Amen. So he's thinking about us. I, 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 I was preaching a funeral one time, and the Lord spoke to me while I was preaching this funeral. He said, you tell that family, I'm thinking about them right now. And he brought that verse to my mind. And I told the family, I said, I've never used this verse in a funeral before, but God wants you to know specifically at this very moment in time, at this, at this very moment that you're hurting, God is thinking about you. Church, that brings a peace to our minds tonight. Because he said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. And he said, and their thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected 
end and a bright future. God, my Lord, God wants our mind to be upon it. He wants us to think about things that's going to be that's going to be helpful because God wants to give us purpose and direction so we can know the plans that God has for us tonight. So we look at this. So it talks about the, the thoughts and it talks about the, the beliefs and the learning of, learning of God's plans for our life. That's why scripture reading is so important. And I know it's a chore. I know it's drudgery. I know it's hard to focus. Try to work your way through all the these and the vows, and, and, and you get and you say, My eyes are so heavy, and automatically I'm so sleepy at this time. I wish somebody would call. I gotta check my Facebook, see what's going on with Hooten, with Sister Hoot Nanny down the road. Who cares what Sister Hoot Nanny's up to at seven? But any way the enemy can distract your mind, he loves to do it. And your mind can go wandering off this direction right here. And you're trying to pray and you're thinking about, what am I going to have for lunch today? And it's breakfast time. Am I, am I speaking to anybody or is it just me? But the enemy loves to distract us and try to distract us from the God's plans that he has for your life. But when, you, but when your mind and my mind is stayed on God and our mind is being rejuvenized by the Word of God and we're, we're being renewed by the Spirit of God tonight, honey, it's a game changer. It changes, it changes the outcome. It's going to change their plan. It's going to change my Lord because God, he's, I've got plans for your life tonight. Hallelujah. It produces right living inside of us. Amen. It produces right living inside of us tonight. Praise God. Without a changed mind, our outward, our outward conformity will fail. Without a changed mind, without a changed mind, our conformity will fail. Our plans will fail without a changed mind. We need to get things transplant i'm gonna go to one more place i'm gonna i'm gonna gonna retire tonight isn't that better than quit finish i'm gonna read one more scripture i'm gonna i'm gonna wrap it up go to psalms i'm gonna wrap it up right here tonight i've i fed you i fed you a round bell of hay tonight psalms chapter one psalms chapter one This is it right here, folks. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Look at verse 2. But his delight, right there, that's where our mind is. That's where our heart is. That's where our focus is. That's where our attention is right there. But his delight is where? In the law of the Lord. And in, and in his law doth he what? Meditate. Think, 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 think. Day and night. He's telling us this is where we focus. This is where we focus. Verse 3. And what happens? Here's the result. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in his season. Can I get an amen tonight? That's the result of a developed, growing mind of Christ tonight. My Lord, my Lord. And he said that his leaf, your leaf, also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. That right there, folks. That's why we need the mind of Christ. That's why we need a renewed mind because we want to prosper. We want to grow. We want to develop our mind to bring God glory. We want to produce, be productive in our life tonight of producing the fruits of the Spirit in our life. Amen. Not the fruits of the flesh because we can produce the fruits of the flesh just as good as we can produce the fruits of the Spirit. We can get awful angry. Hello. I mean, Bill Connell used to say, I know Christians are meaner than a two headed rattlesnake. My Lord, church, if you don't get control and govern your mind, allow the Holy Ghost to help you, you will fail God and you will oppose God and you will rip my... God help us tonight. Because he said the ungodly mind, the ungodly minded are not so, 
but they're like chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor the sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Hello, folks. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Remember, Satan doesn't know your mind, but God does. God knows your thoughts. He knows our thoughts. He knows our thoughts before they're even thought of. J.K. and I Pentecostal tonight. God is good. Father, we love you. Lord, we thank you tonight. God, I pray, Lord, I've, I've unburdened my heart. God, I pray tonight, Lord, that we as Christians will hear this. Lord, we res- whoo, my Lord. Lord, that we'll respond to it tonight. Lord, that we will reflect upon this. Lord, help us to meditate upon the scriptures tonight, Lord, upon what's been established. Lord, and my prayer is tonight, God, that it will not return void, but it will accomplish in having a renewed mind. Lord, a renewed heart that's being governed, that's being led, that's being guided by the Holy Spirit. Father, let our mind be, pro- be producing productive things that glorify God rather than the fruits of the flesh and fruits of carnality as we're walking in the flesh, Lord, that's going to bring damnation. God, help us tonight, Lord, to order our words. Order our words tonight, God, and order the things of our heart tonight, Lord. Lord, let the murders and the thefts and the lust and the adulteries of mine and the fornication of our heart, Lord, let them die out tonight, Lord. As Paul said, let me to crucify and mortify the flesh. Father, I pray the Spirit of God tonight, Lord, that you will awaken us and quicken us by your Spirit tonight, Lord, to bring you glory and to bring you order and fulfill the plans, Lord, that you have for our life. Lord, we love you for it. We give you all the praise tonight in Jesus' wonderful name. And everybody said amen. God is so good tonight. God is so good tonight. Satan, Ephesians 2 and 7, 27 says that Satan works. Satan works in those children who are disobedient. But God works in those children who are obedient. Amen. We're going to be obedient children. I love you tonight, church. I appreciate you. My, I, this is, I knew when God changed this today, man, I got excited. I wasn't excited about the other. I just, I, it was good word. It was good word, but I just couldn't get in it. But I knew when God changed it. Man, what God He set the fire on the inside of us, folks. He knows what we need. Amen. Let's stand to our feet tonight. Hallelujah. Father, we just love you. Lord, we thank you tonight, Lord, as the word has gone forth. The word has gone forth tonight, Lord. I rebuke the fowls of the air from stealing it, eating it tonight, Lord. Lord, but I pray this seed is going to fall upon good ground. Lord, it's going to bring forth a bountiful harvest that is 30, 60, and 100 full return, Lord. Father, we're going to be, our minds are going to be productive. Lord, our minds are going to be stayed and focused and delighted on the things that are, con- that are godly concerned. Hallelujah. Father, keep us tonight, Lord. Strengthen us. Strengthen us, Lord. Keep us from all harm and all danger tonight. Lord, I pray, empower us. Lord, bless our, bless our, our, our prayer meeting tomorrow night. Lord, bless our Sunday services. Father, bless our families, the one that's in the hospitals tonight. Father, we're believing for a good report. Ports. Father, give us souls. Lord, give us souls, and God help us to be help us to be adamant, Lord, about uh, about the about the uh, about the, uh, 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 the uh, about the attendance upon your house. Father, stir us up tonight, Lord. Stir us up, Lord. Father, we give you all the praise and all the glory. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You may need prayer before we leave tonight. Don't want to miss nobody. If you need anything, God is good. Hug your neighbor, tell them, tell them you love them tonight, shake their hand, you're dismissed in Jesus' wonderful, wonderful, holy name tonight. We've got a lot out, had a lot out Sunday. Uh, if you could call and check on those, that would be greatly appreciated. You're dismissed.